Welcome to Train Signal. This is the lab setup lesson in the Forefront Threat Management Gateway 2010 training course. In this lesson, you'll learn about the Global Mantics corporate network as well as the Global Mantics locations and information related to the headquarters systems of information. Why, you may be asking, do you want to learn about all of this? Well, it maps to the physical lab configuration that I'll be using throughout this course. And this is where you're going to discover how to build your own lab in your own environment so that you can more easily follow along with this course if you like. And I'll also give you a general overview of my lab as part of this lesson as well. We're going to be focusing on the Columbia, Missouri location for Global Mantics. This is the Global Mantics headquarters and houses most Global Mantics employees. All of Global Mantics internet facing servers, such as their web servers, and other backend systems are housed in Columbia as well. So it's from this location that information and services are served to the various Global Mantics constituencies, including mobile employees and customers. You're going to be introduced to the overall network layout in this lesson. And throughout this course, we're going to expand on some of these things. And during the web, for example, during the web server publishing lesson, we're going to use additional IP addresses to make the service work. When we hit those lessons, I'll make sure that you know exactly which IP addresses we're going to be using so that you can more easily follow along at home or at work or wherever you happen to be. Here's Global Mantics. Pretty cool, huh? Right there in the center, we have Global Mantics HQ. Center, we have Global Mantics HQ. But let's talk about the systems that Global Mantics is running. First of all, on the internal network. Now, if you don't understand quite yet about the difference between an internal network, a perimeter network, or DMZ, an external network, don't worry too much yet. The reason for that is because we'll be explaining all of those later on in this course, and those are threat management gateway and firewall topics that I'll explain in future lessons. But first of all, let's talk about some of the service servers that are being used by Global Mantics. First of all, we have the Threat Management Gateway server itself. And you're going to learn later, and right now in fact, that this server actually has three network adapters. It has an external network adapter, a perimeter network adapter, or a DMZ network adapter, and an internal network adapter. On the internal network are two additional servers, DC1, which is a domain controller, and Mail1, which is an Exchange 2010 server. Externally, Global Mantics has a DNS service. The only reason that I have this set up externally is so that I can more easily test and demonstrate particular features of Threat Management Gateway, including web server publishing and VPN and items like that. Without that external DNS server using the GlobalMantics.com domain, supporting the GlobalMantics.com domain, I had a lot of difficulty in testing things. So the external DNS server serves nothing more than a um, facilitating purpose to making sure that the demonstrations work uh, well in this course. And you're going to see that I set up demonstrations work uh, well in this course. And you're going to see that I set up that external DNS server. It's not part of the GlobalMantics.com domain. It's simply a DNS server that happens to be running on Windows. And it supports the GlobalMantics.com DNS domain, not necessarily the Active Directory domain. On the perimeter network, otherwise known as a DMZ in firewall parlance, we have a server called a web server. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory on what it can do. And it will have two IP addresses assigned to it. And you're going to learn why later in this course. Then we have to have some desktops. After all, Threat Management Gateway is much more than just your typical firewall. It's also a system by which you can protect desktop users from malware and other activities on the internet. So we have to be able to do some testing. So we have a desktop internally called GMPC1, and we have an external desktop called External-7. They're both running Windows 7. Now you may wonder why I have an external desktop. Well, again, for purely demonstration purposes, this is my remote or outside user. So in order to be able to show you how certain things work, for example, web publishing from the internet, I needed to have an internet-based system. So this sits out in my external network and is a system called external 7. Here's a look at my physical lab configuration. I'm actually running everything on a Hyper-V server running a Dell, on a Dell PowerEdge 2950 with 32 gigs of RAM and about 750 gigs of disk space. There's three 
well, there's one physical network adapter in the system that I'm using. So this is a Hyper-V server with one physical network adapter that's connected to my home lab network. Inside Hyper-V, I've created additional networks. The external network is just your typical, by default created Hyper-V network that connects everything that you create in Hyper-V to the internet or to the local network. In order to facilitate the illusion that there are multiple networks that Threat Management Gateway can use, I created two server-only or private networks inside Hyper-V. One is a perimeter network and one is an internal network. And as you can see, Threat Management Gateway exists on multiple networks. Now, the reason for, again for that is that we need to make sure that Threat Management Gateway is connected to all the networks that are going to be supported. In this case, we have Threat Management Gateway supporting the web server on the perimeter network, and on the internal network, we've got these servers or these systems that I mentioned before. And again, the networks that you see here are nothing more than Hyper-V creations. I created virtual networks inside Hyper-V and was able to make it appear as if to Threat Management Gateway there were three distinct separate networks. And that way, we can test all of the features of Threat Management Gateway exactly as it would be in a production environment. And again, all of the various servers used in this course run in a single virtual host. And it's a Windows Server 2008 R2 data center machine running Hyper-V R2. It's got dual quad-core Xeon processors and just under a terabyte of disk space. Now, for your own environment, if you don't have an eight-core machine, I was lucky to be able to procure this um, with tons of RAM, that's okay. If you're just testing, don't worry too much about if you don't have tons of RAM or, you know, massive numbers of processors. You don't really need to worry about meeting the minimum hardware requirements uh, from a RAM or processing perspective when you're running in a lab. So don't worry too much about it if you only have a machine with, say, 8 gigs of RAM and you want to give them each 768 megabytes of RAM so you can fit them all on the host. Whatever works for you is great. And if you don't have Hyper-V or don't want to work, worry about the download, you know, you can use something like VMware Workstation, Microsoft Virtual PC, or even uh, Oracle's VirtualBox if you prefer. All virtual machines are running either Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows 7, depending on what the, what the role of the machine is. And each in my lab has one gig of RAM designed, and I'm using the 180-day trial software that's available for download from the link you see on your screen. That was a look at the lab we'll be using in this course. In order to understand how the physical lab configuration fits in to the Global Mantics structure, we looked at the Global Mantics corporate network, as well as the Global Mantics locations to get an understanding of where headquarters is and what systems need to be supported. Specifically, the systems were mentioned when we talked to be supported. Specifically, the systems were mentioned when we talked about the headquarters systems that will be supported by the Threat Management Gateway infrastructure. You then got to look at the physical lab configuration and an overview of the lab systems that we'll be using and the software in this course. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.